In tonight's episode, the Adipose and Clary Pose continue their investigations into the murder of the actress on the stage. We will be hunting for clues, we will be dissecting murder weapons, and we'll be interviewing the mysterious and yet alluring Roscoe Strapping. So please join us as we investigate in Leighton Brothers Mystery Room, Part 10. Hello everyone and welcome back to part 10 of Leighton Brothers Mystery Room. I'm Clary Pose and I'm here with my beautiful assistant Addy Pose. Thank you very much. <laughs> part 10! Part 10! And there's people still with us. That's like five hours of footage. Wow. We've been sitting in these chairs mm -hmm. for five hours. Yes, we have. Solving murders. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a public service when you think about it. Okay, so uh, we are we are uh, we started a new case last uh, episode, which was the um, the murder on stage one. I had, I had a cool little pun for its name. What was it? It was uh, let's see if we can get to it. A, mu a murder staged, maybe? Yeah, got a murder, murder staged, staged with that little um, American chappy that had given it to us, and we shall reopen this particular case. We did a bit of an epic episode last time of 40 minutes. This one will probably be a bit short or length for the kind of half an hour mark. Uh, we had um, established that the, it, the that it was shot from a gun and we'd established where that gun was. We haven't fully investigated the murder scene yet, but um, I'm sure that will come. So let's have a look at Clegg's gun. Hadn't we better look for the gun that Clegg used, eh? An excellent idea. And while you do that, I'll set about finding the way to your... Hot. Oh, he's such I a charmer. I think I'm in there. You're, you're so in there. I mean, you might not be in there for more than an evening, but uh, you're in... Uh, well, I'm just saying. You know, we, we know that he's a bit of a philanderer, a, a bit of a cad. A bit of a ladies' man. Oh, so what's the phrase? A checkered pass. <laughs> and I love the way he's got his, his little cane balanced, not in his hand, but on his elbow. He doesn't really look like he needs a cane, does he? No, I think he's got it for more... It might be like, just for show. Like, just, just for show, a bit like that haircut. Hey, you what? There's a celebrity that's got that haircut. Is it's going to annoy me. I'm going to have to think about that. Guys, if you know which celebrity has the haircut of Mr... What's his name? I've forgotten his name. Roscoe... Strapping. Stallion. Strapping, yes. Ros <laughs> <laughs> Roscoe Stallion. Oh, fits him. Right, let's investigate this little uh, gun. Back to the murder scene. Find the murder weapon. Well, find the gun itself. Well, I assume the murder weapon's in the... Don't we already know where the murder weapon is? Wow. In the hand of the the chappy. Well, here's Clegg. This is where Clegg was found unconscious, revolver in hand. He was struck multiple times in the back of the head. An old revolver that has been identified as the weapon that killed Blase. Five unused <laughs> bullets were found in the syllabus. This is the, this is the two star difficulty. Unless unless this is going to be one of those things where we go, well, yeah. clearly this is the weapon. He turns around and goes. Aah! I reckon. Go on and say it. This is the murder weapon, though. Okay, this is clearly the weapon because you've already told us that it is. I've got it. The murder weapon. This is the gun, all right. Oh no, you're uh -oh. going to get. Oh, this is uh -oh. not going to go well. Brava! Brains and beauty. What am I going to do with you? You have keen wit, and more importantly, I have good looks. You have good looks, which is always important for solving a murder. Give over. I'm now special. Oh, you're falling for his charm. I bet Leighton's got something to say about charm. this, though. The barrel. What? It's Mick Hutnell. <laughs> Who is Mick Hutnell? Simply red. Oh, yeah, you're right. If that hair was ginger. Roscoe he... Strapping is Mick Hutnell. I bet he'd like to fall from the stars straight into your arms. <laughs> Did you plan that? Sorry? Did you plan that line before we started? No. <laughs> the I, don't pl I don't plan lines. <laughs> He I mean, just happened I mean, to come out with Simply Red lyrics. I know Simply Red lyrics. You know, maybe you and him go after to go and, you know, get pleasure on the fairground all the way. <laughs> but I bet he loves the thought of coming home to you. And all that kind of stuff. I think that's the only two Simply Red songs I know, though. Oh, hang on, there was, um, isn't there, like, If You Don't Know Me By Now? You'll never, never, never know me. Never, ever, ever. No, although I don't know if that's him, but who knows. Anyway, come on, right, okay. The barrel of this very gun carried the bullet that pierced my beloved's heart and stole her from me. The lead led to death. When you examine the evidence, that is exactly what you shall find. find Sometimes I'm not sure if I'm French or Jamaican. Um, I think you're intending to be French with just a little <laughs> bit of bacon on the side. I, I feel like I'm going into pork pie. <laughs> <laughs> what accent was that? 
I don't know. <laughs> Book fight! There's one! There's one. Um, so by, by the way, if you're watching this and you're in America and you've never heard of Desmond, <laughs> or in fact you're just under 25, you've probably no <laughs> idea what Desmond is. <laughs> so now you must ask yourself, what scoundrel was holding the gun? The base back guard. What? Base, base black, back guard? Black guard. Okay, what's a base black guard? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for clarifying that. So, what rogue was holding the gun? Resume it, investigations. Is it Clegg? I'm just saying, he is in fact holding the gun. Could that be a clue to who was holding the gun? He was struck multiple times in the head. Oh. Here, here. Oh, sorry, wrong accent. <laughs> <laughs> so you see how difficult it is? You get, yeah, it's all mixed up, and then before you know it, you've got Professor Layton talking like a girl. <laughs> Here he is. Here's Clegg. I keep calling him Professor Layton, but he's not, is he? He's no, Inspector Layton. He's Inspector Layton. I miss. Oh, 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 oh. You know, I've been doing these Ace Attorney videos, yes. which like the court case. There's yes. a new game coming out very yes. soon. It's out in Japan already yes. called Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney. Oh, that's interesting. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, so uh -huh. not Inspector Layton, the, the Professor the Returns. The Real Layton. Real Layton. I don't know what's on, though. If, if it's on the DS, then we'll Do be Do you know when it's released in England? Um, but no. Right. It is... Oh, sorry. That was your French that accent. Was, that was my French accent. Here he is. Here's Clegg. He's been knocked out while he's still holding the gun. Gun in hand. Clocked Clegg. Excellent work, Angel's face. What fantastic eyes you have. They're demon blood red, just yeah, for you. They're kind of scary eyes. Perhaps oh. you'd like to come and work for me as my personal assistant. You'll get fat paychecks. You'll take a PA post and fantastic perks. Say yes, Lucy. Say Extras on the side. Yes. Why? What, what is wrong with her? Maybe she's just not a hoe, you know? Maybe she's, you know, a classy lass. Only has eyes for Inspector Layton. She only, only has likes bright people with bipolar disorder. <laughs> no thanks. I think I'll pass. Fat chance. Take a hike. You're my personal nightmare. I hate songs from the 80s. Pity. Still, at least we now have conclusive proof that Clegg was in possession of the murder weapon. Caught gun in hand. Surely that's more than enough evidence to charge the rapscallion. 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 We that's don't a, use that word right, enough. I used to use that more often. I might, I might do it when we go out later. Just call people rapscallions. Hello, rapscallion. That will get us our dinner served early. <laughs> Hey, well, by the way, we're not doing word of the day uh, today. We thought we'd take a little break from the vid that from this video, but we uh, we did have some other ideas uh, for for silly things in the videos. But we'll, we'll maybe do some in, in the future. But do feel free to suggest more words of the day for for next time. Oh, I've got a line! I've, I've got a line! I think this is my first in the video, and we've only been going eight minutes. Um, well, let's not forget one rather crucial thing. Clegg was struck. Repeatedly in the back of the head. Repeated blows. Occipital battery. What does occipital mean? Well, occipital is the lobe on the back of your head. Okay. Actually, I have a feeling that might be the lobe on the front of your head. Okay. Maybe it goes. Maybe it stretches round. Yeah, maybe you're right. Um, that's in red, so that, that's obviously an important fact. Clegg was struck repeatedly in the back of the head. So that means someone behind him. And remember how we had the whole back of stage, front of stage thing? Yes. That bounced off him. Ha ha ha! Obviously that boy did hit to himself. Self-inflicted! He hit himself in the back of the head! Look, I'm hitting myself in the back of the head right now! Oh, you? <laughs> no, but I'm just showing how easy... Well, um, it's, it's you have another line. Oh. Get on task. Well, let's assume for a moment that Clegg is guilty and that he knocked himself out to avoid suspicion. Hit himself senseless. Feign innocence. It's not a bad... Like, innocence thing, that, yes, you know, you've got the murder weapon, what can I do to make myself look not guilty? I'll hit myself in the back I'll of the head. I'll hit myself in the back of the head, in or in the face. Do you think that maybe just dropping the murder weapon might have done the same job? If that were true, it would be very strange indeed. But, is that, that, that that's why we're discounting that, because it's strange. It's strange, yes. As if murder is completely normal. Well done, Leighton, you're a star. Do you see why, Lucy? Start questioning. No. Oh. What's odd about Clegg knocking himself out to avert suspicion? He was still holding the gun. That's not that odd. He well, fell it could be, because down. he, if he fell unconscious, he would drop the gun, but I don't think it's that one. Face but, down. I think it's the fact that he was hit multiple times, because if he knocked... 
Like it'd be rather hard to punch yourself again after you've gone unconscious. And also, whilst I... Yeah, but maybe it took him multiple times before he went unconscious. Maybe he hit himself, didn't didn't faint, hit himself, didn't Yeah, but that would be really hard to do. I mean, it'd be hard to hit yourself anyway, but to hit yourself once you're already in pain. I think it's the fact that he fell face down. I think it's the fact he was hit multiple times. I think it's the fact he fell face down. Justify it. Because if he hit him, if he knocked him, like, okay, so I'm hitting myself on the back of, ouch. (laughs) For those of you who can't see Clary, she just hit herself on the back of the head to demonstrate this. Yes, please continue. (laughs) Is your head okay? (laughs) It's fine, thank you. But say I hit myself on the back of my head. Yes. Like, the force, like, my arm is, like, reached down to the back. So if I was going to faint, I would fall backwards. Whereas if someone else hit me on the back of my head, I'd be like, forwards. Exactly. Oh, I see. No. <laughs> um, yes, but do you remember the bit in red was he, he was hit multiple times from behind? Oh, then again, from behind was in there as well. Mm. So you're right, it could be either. But I still reckon if I got a spade and I was holding a spade and I hit myself on the back of the head, I would still fall forwards. I don't think I would. I mean, firstly, I don't think I'd hit myself on the back of the head with a no. spade. But, okay, hang on, hang on, think of this now. I reckon if you hit yourself in the back of the head, you could fall forwards or you could fall backwards. Whereas, I think hitting yourself in the back of the head multiple times is a lot weirder. Because once you've hit yourself already, you're already dazed, you're confused. Plus, it takes quite a lot of time to muster up the courage to be able to punch yourself in the back of the head. And you can't just keep bashing yourself until you're unconscious. Because what, what, what if you're like a little bit unconscious after the third one? You can't then bash yourself Yeah, before. but if you're a little bit unconscious after the third one... Then you fall unconscious and you've got three bashes on the head. I reckon it's the third one. Fine, choose the third one. No, I don't want to override that. Maybe we should flick a coin. Okay, where's a coin? Uh, I've got a coin. I've got a... Oh, hang on. There's a wallet, right? There you go. Wallet. Okay, so what... what pick let's a, say, pick. heads face down, tails multiple times. Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can't, you can't flick flicking coins, coin. Let me do it. it. Here we go. What was what? Head face down, tail multiple times. Head, head face, face down. down. Right, okay, well, thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Um, we're now going to get a question wrong, thanks to Clary Poe. So here we go. He fell face down. Wrong. I was wrong. Wrong. Well, wrong. <laughs> what was I? You're wrong. <laughs> wrong, 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 wrong. That wasn't even like a gentle wrong, was You're it? Wrong. It wasn't even like a good try, think <laughs> again. Or hmm, maybe, let's think about it. No, it's just, just big a letters. big fat wrong. Big fat wrong. Oh, I was wrong. Well, it's because he's face down, isn't it? That's a bit odd if someone punched the lights out of him, eh? Now, now, precious, surely you're not suggesting that Clegg is somehow innocent? I love the way that since you made that suggestion, Leighton is literally <laughs> holding his head in despair at you. In fact, that, that's kind of what I was doing. As it you, is, as, yeah. as, 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 it <laughs> is. Well, we certainly cannot say that Clegg is uh, guilty. Let's study his statement, Lucy. Think about the facts... Carefully, okay. okay? Carefully now, let's just add that on. Um, if he was hit from behind, I would expect him to end up face down, wouldn't you? I now you spell it out like that. I suppose you would. Say it. Silly me. Say it. Silly me. Say it again. No, I said it twice already. Oh. Don't you? Oh, speaking of cool things that involve my plucky little assistant, one of our fans sent us something. Sent me something on Twitter, which I'm very, very excited about. What did they send you on Twitter? They sent us some fan art. They 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 didn't make it, but they found it on Google, which was a picture yeah. of you, my little plucky assistant, yeah. bringing me Leighton some tea. Never. That would never happen. Bringing I don't tea. believe it. Bringing me tea. Um, it's on my Twitter account, people. If you haven't followed the Adipose on Twitter yet, please do, and you can see it in the recent posts. But there is definitely you bringing me tea, and it's about damn time. Well, you know what I want next? What? I want some art of you bringing me some tea. <laughs> you want one of our fans to make a piece of art with you, me bringing you some <laughs> That's tea? That's what not I good. want. Well, even if I do, I'll have my hand very deep in my pockets while I do so. Anyway, moving on. You said silly me. Uh, that was from Hannah, by the way, on Twitter. Thank you very much Thank for, you very for sending much to us. Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. So, um, if you were the murderer, uh, what would you do to avert suspicion away from you? He was hit multiple times. Go on, then. Tell you what, a fl- well, let's flick a coin, and if it's heads, we'll pick mine, and if it's tails, we'll pick mine. Yep, mine. Here we go. 
He was hit multiple times. Wrong! <laughs> You're wrong! You're wrong! <laughs> what are you? Oh no! <laughs> I'm wrong! Are we like the worst investigative team ever? We should play like platform games where we have to like jump over a box to be Press like, X. I jumped over the box! <laughs> Oh, God, then carry on then. Well, wouldn't it be a bit odd that he were hit so many times from behind <laughs> instead of just the one? Look at Leighton's face. <laughs> oh, my God. You're an idiot. Indeed, it would stunning, Angel. Simply stunning. Oh, hey, that's I'm not feeling so sure of myself now you started waxing lyrical. Uh, good, because there's no reason to assume a single blow would have knocked him out. What are you talking about? However many times he hit himself, it's quite clearly self-inflicted. Self-inflicted, well, rather. It's very hard to believe that's true. There's something far more obvious belying any attempt to look innocent. Lucy, if you were the murderer, what would you do to avert suspicion away from you? Oh, you'd give the gun to someone else. That's a good point. That is a good point. It is a good point. But you could... But I thought the whole point was that of the plot, the subplot was like he knocked himself out while holding the gun and then be like, oh look, I'm not... I, I am holding the gun but I was unconscious so I couldn't have done it. Yeah, but still that's a good point. We suck. Right, well done. On the third attempt you've got the third option. Ta-da! Gun! Well, if I were trying to make it look like I hadn't done it, I'd have chucked that gun away for starters. This is embarrassing. This is an this embarrassing is video. embarrassing. Full of embarrassing things. Is there any chance that we can go do this one again? We can't re-record it just because we got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise the video would be just like, look, we're good. Look, we're good. Look, we're so good. Um, exactly. Whatever plot you came up to, to divide suspicion from you, it would not involve holding the gun. No, however you look at it, Clegg would have disposed of the gun before knocking himself out. The order's all wrong. A diversion. Da, da, do you make such assumptions without knowing the man? Imagine the man's twerp. a twerp. twerp. Good word. I tell you, he is a fool, a complete imbecile. Hang on. Angry. Speech mark there. Oh, sorry. I tell you, he is a fool, a complete imbecile. Clegg is a clot. The man's a twerp. We see that quite a lot in newspapers these days. We actually. do, don't we? <laughs> That's why he didn't have the brains to figure out he should dispose of the gun. It's really quite obvious. He's the killer. Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing more we can say on the matter then. Unfortunately not. The man is witless and that is all there is to it. Questioning, Questioning session, session over. over. Right. Well, we, ha we have deduced that it was planted on him when unconscious, but we don't seem to have necessarily scored any points on our no. potential suspect there. Well, let's continue on, though. Well, I think that settles it. Clegg is the killer. There can be no doubt. What planet have you been on all this time, eh? Well, let's, let's just recap what <laughs> we've found you, out so far. Thank you, Layton. The victim... And I, 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 I think this time, because we didn't search the entire murder scene right at the start, but actually most things that have come up have been new. Okay. I think this is this has been better. Uh, aside from the fact that we've got everything wrong, yes. it's been better. And that we're now recapping everything that we just got wrong. Well, I think perhaps we need the recap. <laughs> we, got it, we got it wrong. Maybe they're being kind. <laughs> the victim, Gloria Blase, it was... Oh, my voice has gone all Barry White. <clears throat> well, the victim, Gloria, Gloria Blase, Blase. Uh, was killed by a single bullet. And the person found holding the gun was none other than Clegg. However, Clegg was hit by someone and knocked unconscious. And if he'd been trying to make it look like he hadn't done it, he'd never have kept hold of the gun. But he's a complete glut! He hasn't the brains to work that out! Well, the other thing we know for certain is where Miss Blase was shot from. That's... Th that's me. That, that's not my line. <laughs> that's my line. Well, he Get took off. my line earlier, so now I'm taking yours. <laughs> that's where you were standing on stage during the performance, Mr. Strapping. He isn't strapping, I have to say. He's He might be good-looking and he might have... He 80s wears... pop star hair, but he's not like buff, is he? He wears a bow tie. He does wear a bow tie, and bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. Did you see the link I sent you on Facebook I earlier? loved it, I loved it. Doctor Who aprons. I want them all. Amazing, I want them as well. I mean, obviously, I don't really wear aprons, especially female aprons, but nevertheless, I want them. 
Yes, by a cruel twist of fate, my beloved seems to have been shot from the very spot where I stood. I would say that's quite damning. I would say that's quite the damning. The bullet came from where I was. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the problem is in the timing. To shoot somebody from anything other than total blank range and total darkness is bordering on the impossible. Then it was a fluke. This is completely irrelevant. A fluky murder. However, our oh, brains and hurting. Never mind all that. Oh, anger, frustration. I just remembered something of vital importance. I've left some pasta on. Goodbye. Maybe he was killed with an ice bullet. Oh, what's that then? Out in the blue? The death threat. There was a threatening note, was there not? This is true. There was. Eh? With that additional evidence, you will have no choice but to acknowledge that Clegg must be the killer. It seems we have some more investigating to do, although we did find the threatening note. But did we read what it said? Sorry? Did we, what did the note say? Uh, the note says something along the lines of, you, you're paying for your betrayal. Oh, uh, yeah. Indeed you do. Find the death threat! Well, we already found that, so we know where that is. And we're still got ten minutes left, so we do have time to investigate the death threat. Now. Oh, hang on, you need like sort of picture the scene, but this is acting, darling. And now. Yeah. Picture the scene. I am picturing the scene. My eyes are closed. Kaleg falls in love, love with love, the love. Beautiful. beautiful. Whose line is this? I'm emphasising. No, you're talking over my lines. Sorry. Clegg falls in love with the beautiful Gloria, but his passion is resolutely rejected. The poisson. Passion. His fish. The, po the passion. <laughs> Consumed by self-pity and rage, he sends a death threat to the poor defenseless flower. She's a petal. She's a petal. So where's this death threat now then, eh? Somewhere at the scene of the crime, naturally. One of the detectives who came to the theatre told me of it. I'm quite sure it's there. Uh... But you haven't actually seen it with your own eyes, though. Ha ha ha, I don't need to see it to know what artless piffle Clegg... N what? Artless oh, piffle. No doubt came up with. I think it's a bit sus that he knows about it. Even though he's saying all the detective told me sus. about it. But yeah, I don't think you know about it. Anyway. Now, go and find it. The note that contains the incriminating death threat. Well, we've already found it. And we will start investigating. And I know where it is. It's on her little neck. Um, if we zoom in, we'll be able to spot it. Here it is. A bloody note. You'll pay for betraying me. It's not prop for the show and has a hole in it. Are we agreed? This is the death threat. This is the death threat. Looks fairly death threaty to me. Here, Prof, I reckon this must be the death threat, don't you? Excellent work, Lucy! Oh, that normally is followed then by me mm. going, that's not a death threat, mm, that's my that's my grocery list. <laughs> that's for the Prof... No, sorry, wrong voice. That's for the... <laughs> <laughs> that's for the Prof to decide, Mr. Strapping, not you. You'll pay for betraying me. I see. It's in red, that's a clue. That's a clue. It's a little bit funny it says that. Betraying, I mean. Oh, sorry, that's you. That's me. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. You do it. <laughs> it makes it sound like Craig and Blade had a fling or something. Utter tush. Tush. Gloria only had eyes for me. Oh. In that case, it seems probable that Mr. Clegg was not the author of the note. That's Clegg. And it's true, you can't have it both ways. He either had an affair and betrayed him, or he didn't do the note. That's, you. That's one possible explanation, yes. We, we're yet to make his little stone heart crack at all. It's a little bit strange. It's cracked, hasn't it? Did oh, it you stop? mean actually hasn't fallen off? Nothing's yeah. fallen off. So, who were it that Miss Blaze had done the dirty on then, eh? Of course, it's so obvious. The killer must have been a member of the audience. Always changed his tune very he quickly. Has. Gloria had countless fanatical followers. Picture the scene. Oh, here we go. A fan. A fan, fan, fan. Let me do echoes, they're cool. Fine. A fan consumed with jealousy see, 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 see. over Gloria's engagement to me. To me, to me, to me. See, it's cool. Is it? 
No. Because the only thing is that when we film these, I end up a bit echoey anyway. All right. <laughs> so, <I'm... laughs> so me adding extra echo onto your echo, probably not good enough. Fair enough, fair enough. Oh, my poor beloved, how you shook like a little lamb whenever you opened one of their tasteless letters. The scrap of paper we've been musing over is quite obviously a death threat from this unhinged fan. Indeed. Update. A typed piece of paper that reads you'll pay for betraying me. According to strapping, this is a death threat from one of Blase's crazed fans. Bye, Ekprof. We'll have to pull in everyone from the audience for questioning. We'll be here all year. I don't think so, because if it was a member of the audience, how does the gun end up back on stage in the hand of the guy? Good question, and that is why you're an investigator. It is, and I think maybe we should just go up to him and say, how did you end up holding the gun? Yeah. Hey up, that's the phone. That is the phone. Can you answer the phone? Maybe get me some tea? No. I have pictorial evidence. You've done it before. Flies. Excuse me a moment. Now while she's out of the way, I wanted to talk to you about your hair. How do you make it look so glorious? Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. And we clearly have nothing to talk about because neither See? of us can... See? I might only be the assistant, but I'm the one that holds this whole <laughs> thing together. Two men alone in the room, no one can say a word. Well, that's what guys do. We, we, we don't talk about things, we do things. If these guys were having a nice game of football together, maybe a little drink, they'd be fine. But small talk, I mean, what are they going to say? How's the weather? How's your face? Well, given that they're investigating a murder, something along the lines of, so who murdered this person might be appropriate, rather than, hmm, But we've already talked so. about that, haven't we? Go, let's try, let's try improvise a man conversation. Okay, but remember, I'm not a man. This is, I'm just going to show you how difficult it is. Okay, fine. So, um... How, how, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Um, well, yeah, it's all good. See? <laughs> Bring Lucy back in. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Uh, so this is what you talk about when the this woman is what leaves we're the room, about. is it? Talk about girls. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, are you two in a world? Lovers, a couple. Ew. My head. Oh, I beg your pardon. You must be surely. A true stallion would be sure to get. What? <laughs> How rude! I'm not reading that. I think you're a frigid Fendi. Yeah, well, I think you should. Uh, what? Frigid Fendi. My my first name's Fendi, so I think he's calling me a, fe- a, a frigid. I, I'm. He's accusing Professor Layton of being a bit asexual. Who's he calling a fine young filly? He's calling you a. Am fine... I a horse? Um, a frisky young horse. No, no. He's saying that you're. You should get frisky because frisky I'm a filly. Because I'm a. I'm a fine young horse. You're genuinely upset about this, aren't I'm, you? I am. Yeah. Oh. Feminist Clary pose. That is offensive to women. If I were her, I should take it as an insult to my femininity that nothing has happened. You mean we have insulted you, her, by not seducing her? Yeah. By treating her as an equal who's here to investigate a murder, they have insulted her. It's clearly irresponsible of me not to be asking her every possible uh, uh, situation. I don't really understand what you're talking about here. I, uh, 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 you're a red-blooded male, aren't you? I don't think I'd call myself a red-blooded. Ah, uh, uh, oh, Lucy, hello! Mr. Strapping. Oh, hello, we were just talking about uh, the weather. That were your manager on the phone. There's a famous chap who wants words with you at your office. Good gracious, this is- Oh, I wonder what I was. You've got all English. <laughs> Good gracious, is that the time? Oh, rather. <laughs> Good gracious, is so, that the time? Save that voice for another character. <laughs> I said it. Oh, right, so you said it. It must be that bore of a two million pound film I'm supposed to be acting in. That's quite a lot of money. That is. I've changed my mind about him. Naturally, they wanted me as the headliner. What was it now? A pirate film, I think? Arr. Well, it sounds very important. You'd want to keep them waiting, I imagine. And if you could please leave now, that would be great. Hmm, well, seeing as we've proved who the murderer is, I should take this opportunity to make my exit. Yes, I think you should probably do so. Some some sort of phrase ending with the word off. Yes, that'd be good. All right, ta-ta then. We'll ta-ta! Laura, Laura laughs! I'm looking forward to it already, precious. My little angel face. It's DC Baker to you. Oh. Adieu. Adieu. To you and you and yeah. Indeed. Ah, that man gets right on my nose. 
Do you think he did it? Without a shadow of a doubt, I have more reasons to dislike him now than I ever had before. We still have a number of riddles to solve, but he is a very intelligent adversary. Oh, I He doesn't seem that sharp to me. That's because he's hitting on you. Uh, he very carefully and deliberately diverts the conversation away from the most crucial point. The most crucial point? What's that, then? Well, whether Blasé was actually shot in the dark or not. Indeed, our oh, new in line dark. of inquiry. Now, I think this is going to be a good point for us to end our um, today's video. Um, thank you for very much for watching. We do hope you have enjoyed it. And, of course, if you haven't um, played ahead, you're more than welcome to um, give us your suggestions and uh, theories um, in the comments section below. Um, thank you very much for Clary to, uh, to Clary to, for, for playing with us today. Thank you, Addy, for playing with us today. That, <laughs> You're welcome, and uh, we will see you soon. I will put I'll put out a um, video probably on Friday or Saturday, giving you the schedule for next week to let you know when the next episode is coming out. So take care. Um, do like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.